Hello everybody, welcome back and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Um, this is my first writing lesson video here in about a month, so I am very excited. I'm um, playing around with a new format, so I do hope you all enjoy it. Um, a few days ago on the channel, I mentioned that I was sending off some of my older short stories um, off to some literary magazines, and someone on the video had commented, well, how do you know where to send the stories to? Right? How do I rank literary magazines um, and how do I kind of determine where my stories would be a good fit? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a several part series going over literary magazines, kind of the ins and outs of them. Um, and today's video is going to be all about ranking, specifically how I determine a literary magazine's rank um, and how I determine where I'm going to send my stories to. So basically how I do it is I rank a literary magazine based on four criteria. Um, it is, uh, if you want to think of like the four P's, it's people, pay, prize winning, and prestige. People refers to the circulation of a magazine, how many subscriptions there are. Pay is obviously just how much money you get. Um, prize winning is how many, you know, how often does this magazine, you know, get nominated, have stories that get nominated for awards, um, and such. And then the last thing is just how prolific is the magazine, right? How well known is the magazine? How, uh, how much notoriety is there? Right. Um, and so what I do is I make a determination on literary magazines based around these areas. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go through and basically just go over the different tiers that I have and give you a couple examples. Um, I'm hoping that, they, that this will be kind of a broader concept um, that maybe you can start applying when you look at literary magazines as well. Um, this is certainly not the be all end all of this, but at least this is a fun, I think a good first video to explain this. All right, so we begin with tier number one and how this works basically is it's an eight tiered system. Tier number one is the elite of magazines. <laughs> um, I'm referring to magazines with over 100,000 subscribers. Um, I'm referring to magazines that are prize winning and ones that offer a really hefty payment. What I'm talking about actually is really like off the top of my head, two magazines off the top of my head, um, The New Yorker in The Atlantic. Um, I think The New Yorker, I think, has like over a million, and The Atlantic has, I think, half a million, I want to say. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a ton. It is a ton. And so um, with that, basically, this tier right here is the most prestigious tier you'll ever get into. If you can submit a story and get in here, your, your career, your life changes. Not just your career, your entire life probably will change. Um, it is amazing um it is a very hard goal because often to get into these magazines you've got to have some notoriety going in you, as a as a no-name author it's simply not realistic that you're going to get into this um, on your first try if you want to think at some point in the future i think it's awesome i think you should have a stretch goal like that i really do um but this is tier one for a reason it is almost near impossible but if you get in i mean i i think it's like, I think the New Yorker is like $2 a word or something like that. It's insane money. Um, but unfortunately, us us plebs, us, um, us newer writers, I guess, um, we're just not at that level yet. Um, but that is the first tier. Now we're on to tier number two. And tier number two is interesting. Um, this is basically just below that. Um, now, when I'm talking about the criteria for this tier, basically anything that is really elite and well-known, um, but with a very high circulation, um, ones that will change your career for sure. And magazines that have over 5,000, um, subscriptions. So when I refer to these, this is where people start thinking of like literary magazines, um, quote unquote, this is probably where people start to think, right? If I mentioned the New Yorker Atlantic, most people in the street have heard of it. If I start mentioning plowshares, for example, to somebody, the average person has no idea what that is. Writers do. And so this is where kind of the the, the most elite of like the writing community comes in, I guess. Um, and so when I'm referring to this, I am definitely talking about plowshares. I am talking about the Paris Review. I'm talking about Granta. Uh, I am talking about um, really Zotrope as well um, comes to mind. Missouri Review as well. Um, that, that That's a really, really prestigious university magazine. These are ones that have high circulations in high, high, high levels of respect. Um, unfortunately, when it comes to these magazines, they're very difficult to get into. Um, 
oftentimes you need to have an agent to get you through that slush pile. Um, if you are a new writer, beginning writer with no agent, um, no prior publications, no like really no notoriety, notoriety at all, it would be very unlikely that you would get into these magazines. I would estimate it's it's far below a one percent chance um, easily, uh, but even then, it would be very, very difficult to get in. And so this tier, I, I often tell people, if you're kind of watching these videos here, I imagine you're, you're probably not having maybe the, the greatest success in your career. Um, I, I, I like to think maybe I cater, cater to that kind of audience, but I, I understand if you're watching a YouTube video on literary magazines, um, you're probably not at that level yet. So um, it's very difficult to get in. And I would tell you to perhaps avoid going for this tier right now. It's an awesome, awesome ambition. Um, it, it truly is. And I, I have my own ambitions when it comes to this tier. But um, right now, for beginning authors, authors that don't have agents yet, it's simply very difficult to get into this sort of tier. All right. So now we're on to tier number three. And tier number three is a bit interesting. Um, this is where I would tell you to start focusing a lot of your energy. Um, if you are a literary writer who's trying to get into this um, field and you, you got short stories you want to send off, aim for this tier because it is an elite magazine but just with a much smaller circulation, um, still prize winning certainly and usually decent payment. But these, generally speaking, don't require agents to really get through the slush pile. You can kind of get through on your own. It's, it's still an uphill battle. Always having an agent always helped. But it's a much, much, much more achievable, uh, achievable thing. And with it, it's not by any means easy either. Um, so when I say aim for this, it's going to be a challenge. But I, it's one where you actually have a realistic chance if the quality of your work is good. Um, and so what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about magazines that have a bit of a lower circulation, right? Often below 5,000. Um, for example, the Iowa Review, very, very well respected. I think it's like 3,000 or so um, as far as subscription goes. Um, and you're getting paid about $100 minimum and I think it's like eight cents a word or something like that. Um, so excellent money, good prestige. Iowa Review carries a lot of weight. And again, you don't necessarily need an agent to get into these sort of um, these sort of magazines here. Um, I think it's an excellent goal for people to aim for. I think you should be going really for a lot of these magazines. Um, in addition to this, uh, a couple of examples would be like Conjunctions or McSweeney's would be on here as well. The uh, New England Review would be up here as well. They're very, very higher level, but again, it's it's reasonable that that somebody um, kind of first time debut story or maybe with not a whole lot of stories um, could potentially get into this thing if your quality is, is tough. If you spent a lot of time on your writing and your craft, it's very reasonable that you could get in here um, just kind of on your own in a sense. Now we're on to tier number four. Um, and this is probably the most populous of the tiers. So if tier three is where a lot of them were well-known uh, and, and a lot of the higher prestigious ones that you can actually get into as a newer writer are. This tier is where a lot of the respected magazines are um, with just a lot of smaller circulation, um, still prize winning, and you often will still get paid, though there are some that maybe where you wouldn't be getting paid. Um, this is again, a very, very wide field here. I mean, this is everything from like having like Copper Nickel um, to Salamander to like Boulevard. Uh, they're names that when I say them, you may not be as familiar with them. They may not uh, kind of appear right away. And so with it, they are obviously not like a tier three, but they are very well respected and you would do well to get stories in here. Um, it would be very, very good if you could get something in here. Um, a lot of university ones tend to fall into this tier as well, like the Cincinnati Review, um, obviously it's up there. Um, but even ones like the Michigan Quarterly Review, the Harvard Review, University ones tend to start to fall into this one, the more mid-level university ones. Um, so again, very strong writing. Um, it's it's that will get you into this. Um, it's just not as well known in circulation. Often only about one to two thousand maybe um, people perhaps read this. But again, there's a lot. There's a lot that fit into this level here. Um, so. If, if you're looking at kind of ones that are perhaps, um, you know, if, if tier three is like a stretch for you, tier four is a very, very solid, I think is where a lot of solid writing can get into. Um, if you write the right story and if you write to what the what they're looking for, in a sense, or if you find a uh, press or a university that 
caters to your style of writing. Um, two very different things, but it's very important that you match your writing to what they're looking for. And I'll go over that in a future video. Tier number five. Um, now we're going a little bit lower here, but I don't want you to think that this is somehow a diminished quality of magazine. Um, when I talk about lower on the tier, this is just simply lower circulation, um, potentially less chances for prize winning opportunities, and just less payment. That's what we're talking about here. These are still well-respected magazines. Um, and so what I'm talking about is magazines that are probably getting still lower um, subscription counts. I'm still probably in the thousands, um, like maybe 8,000, but just lower. Or uh, the ones that maybe they don't publish what their subscriptions are. Um, but again, we're talking more about like the Notre Dame Review, um, North American Review uh, with that. Uh, Puerto del Sol as well would, would fall into this level as well. Um, just magazines that are well respected, just lower circulation, less payment. Um, and conversely, if you're looking for like an award or to get a story, perhaps um, get some, some more notoriety for it. It's just a little bit less than the prior, the upper tiers there. All right, on to tier number six. So tier six is basically tier five. It's just kind of the same thing. The main subjective difference is just small circulation and it's less prize mentions, right? It's it's less of um, notoriety um, when it comes to awards and payment often is lower. Um, a good example would be like the New Ohio Review, right? Where it has a circulation under a thousand, yet it's pretty well known magazine. I mean, New Ohio, it's still pretty well known, um, you know, and you're getting paid. I think New Ohio, when I submitted it, I think it was like, I don't know, like 10 bucks a page or something like that. Um, so you're still making some money there. It's just lower subscription, um, uh, yeah, lower subscription counts. And with it, you know, with these, as you go kind of lower on, on the tiers here, the chances of getting into, you know, again, more prizes or rewards, it tends to fall. Um, but still, very strong. Um, Southern Review would fall in here as well. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones that would fall into this, but th those are the ones that, two that I've, I've, I've sent to you before. Um, so that, that's, that's basically where I would rank these in, in terms of that. So tier number six. Now we are on to tier number seven. What tier seven is, is good magazines, but very, very niche or ones that are a bit more of the hole in the wall types, right? It, it's kind of like, it, it, it's like, it's like when you go to a city and you got like your favorite bar there, but it's off the main strip and no one knows where it is. Kind of the same thing. These are magazines that are not as well known, but ones that you may enjoy, ones that you may pick up and might find you might enjoy, um, and still are well, we're still have some degree of respect. Um, just very, very small. I'm talking like circulations that you probably don't, we don't even know what the numbers would be, but probably well below a thousand, I think, at this point, or maybe around a thousand. Um, there are some exceptions to that, but that's generally what I would put this at. Um, I'm trying to look, I'm just looking through right now, like where I've submitted before. Um, a good example would be something like Iron Horse, which back in the day, I, I don't know if their circulation was, but I think they paid like $100 for a story. Pretty good, right? Like, yeah, it may not be the most well-known, but 100 bucks for a story is pretty damn good, <laughs> at least for me. Um, with that, you know, they, they have, tend to have a lot more of, they tend to be a bit more, um, like, again, just a bit more catered. They also tend to have a bit more um, of a, a certain a certain genre, a certain style they're looking for. Um, for example, I, I submitted to one called Fractured Lit. And so Fractured Lit, I, I think it was like, I don't know, I think it was like 50 bucks they were offering for the story or something like that um, for stories back at the time. Um, I don't know the circulations, but that that's an example right there, right? It's still a good magazine. It's just, it, you're just not putting it at, at kind of with the other tiers there. It's, it's a bit more new, it's a bit more niche in and so its audience is going to be just a lot more smaller. Um, but this would be an example really of where tier seven would fall into. Um, and again, as I remind over and over again, does not mean these, these are bad magazines. They just simply are less, have less notoriety and less money and less circulation. And lastly, we have tier number eight. What this is, is very simply everything else. Um, these are more of the, the works that you would see 
on like submittable, for example, when you're trying to submit a story and it'll have like, it'll be like, you know, submit next 24 to 40 hours um, to get in or they'll give you like a general theme of a story and that's basically it. You can't find too much about them. Um, they are the most shoestring budgets of shoestring budgets uh, of magazines. Um, some can be very good, but I do tend to find that there are a lot that tend to rely on gimmicks too that you will you can go like on submittable just as an example and you, I'm sure you'll find that like they'll be like, 24-hour turnaround time on responses, right? They're relying more on gimmicks um, just to get people to submit, to get more stories, because unfortunately they just don't have much of a circulation, much notoriety at all. Um, again, some can be really, really fantastic, but they, that's what I would put kind of at the the bottom, the eighth tier, right? Is everything else um and everything else is a lot <laughs> that is quite a lot certainly tiers one through seven is a ton as well but that's even tier eight's a lot there's some really good work that that can be found in there as well and tier seven tier eight there can be crossover too um there can be works uh, i'm sure that some people would find um, would, would rank up in seven someone that would say eight um and it's a very arbitrary line that i've drawn here um with some of these magazines but that is why I, I've ranked them where I have ranked them. That, that's my criteria there. That, those are my areas. And I think that's where you as writers really should be looking as well, is you should be ranking these things more based upon those factors, more based upon how well you'll basically become known for works in there. Um, when it comes to tier eight, I actually submitted uh, a story just the other day. One of the stories, that, one of the three I submitted when I mentioned it in my vlog was to a tier eight magazine. It was one where um, there's almost no, necessarily no notoriety, but the reason why is I could potentially get that out relatively quickly, and I'm not looking necessarily to get discovered through the magazine. Um, many times when you submit to magazines, you should be looking to get discovered through it. You should be looking to get it out to a magazine so that way someone reads it, finds your work. When I submitted to, to that magazine, it was more about me just getting someone to publish it, to get it out there so I could direct people from my YouTube channel to it. It's a very, very sort of backwards way of thinking about it, um, but it, it's a very, it's a work that I don't think has a whole lot of legs. It wasn't, it's not particularly that fantastic. I think it's entertaining. I think it's a good story, but it's not something where I, I think it has a whole lot of legs to sort of stand on its own. And so I'm not necessarily looking to get people from it, um, you know, to me, I, I'm more looking at it from the backwards side of things of, I just want someone to publish it, um, which is, you know, just to treat it as kind of a step above me doing it myself, um, either through a blog or self-publishing the story instead. Um, just something to think about as well, it's, it's, it's again, it's a bit of a different mentality to this, uh, but just another consideration too. Um, I don't think people should adopt that too often, but I'm, I'm just in a position right now where it's on my computer and I got to get it off my computer and it's either I archive it or I give it to somebody to put it out there. So, um, bit of an aside, but I hope you understand kind of, there might be reasons why you may want to look at something, what I would call like a tier eight magazine for that exact reason. Um, and so with that, I do hope you've enjoyed what I've put out here today. I'm going to have a few more additional lessons coming up in the following weeks. Um, if you didn't do it, certainly give me a, kind of a like, a thumbs up there. Um, and let me know in the comments if you any kind of questions on this. I know this is a bit arbitrary. I certainly know this is a bit um, perhaps confusing as well because I don't really have a compiled list per se. Um, when I get to the last video of the series, I actually am going to do a small little list to actually go over how I do these, um, these magazines like in real time. You can actually see how I would actually rank some of these magazines. But with that, certainly because I was, you know, kind of went over sort of these arbitrary things. If you have any kind of questions on that, leave it in the comments and I can get back to you. Um, but with that, um, I will see you all tomorrow with my vlog and I will have a writing lesson up next week.